Hello quail lovers and welcome to Simply Made Homestead. I'm Marion and today I want to talk to you about the importance of the male to female ratio. Now it is important all the way across the board guys regardless to whether it's cows or goats or pigs or whatever it is but today we're going to talk specifically about poultry and even more specifically about our quail. Now, many of you know who have been following our channel, we have a long playlist about raising quail, tons of really good information there. I'll be sure and link it at the end of this video for you and in the description box below. Our quail that we just hatched this last time, they became of age, I started seeing some eggs laying around in the cage there, and uh, I did something I haven't done before and I won't ever do again. Um, I kind of let them go. Typically when we hatch eggs, it's been a 50-50%, you know, 50 male, 50 female, and uh, I just kind of, it's busy. It's springtime on the homestead, there's the gardens coming in, it's just, you know, there's a lot going on. It can get overwhelming, and I kind of let them go. I didn't check on them, I didn't get them separated. Uh, we're still unpacking things, we're still trying to get set up in certain areas on our homestead here because we did go through a move about six months ago. So we had to pull the quail cage, get it all set back up, and I just kept procrastinating. Guys, I can't tell you enough, don't procrastinate. As soon as you, when they get to be five, six weeks old, go ahead and start looking. Try to see if you can tell the difference between the male and the female. We have a video on how to sex your quail. I'm gonna link it right here for you. And it's an excellent video. Please check it out. I typically am closer to the eight week mark, seven, eight weeks, and our quail started hatching at seven weeks. So I am so mad at myself for not checking on them sooner like I should have because we ended up with nine females and 14 males. Now, your quail. A lot of people that are breeding quail for hatch, selling hatching eggs, they want to ensure that hatch rate, they have a really good hatch rate, and they'll put one male per four females. I like to put five. Um, uh, once we get to the point, we do plan to sell hatching eggs again, and the baby quail, we're working on building our flock back up from our move, and um, we are MPIP certified as well, guys. In case you're interested and you want to get on the waiting list, uh, be sure and shoot me a message or you can leave a comment in the, in the comment section below and I can get back to you there. Now, once I finally went in the cage and started pulling females to start separating them out and uh, I'd like to pull the bigger ones, the jumbo of course, you know if we can get more meat bang for our buck, a little bigger bird, it's always a good thing to have and try to breed for the jumbo quail. But. I really didn't have a choice. I ended up with nine females and 14 males. I was so upset with myself when I started checking my birds. And the big reason is because these four down here had vent prolapse. Now, while vent prolapse can be treated and it can heal up where they're okay, uh, sometimes it can also, they, they never heal up and they're in pain and they're just made to make lay eggs and they continue to lay eggs and it's extremely painful to them. It's just a, a bad situation. So if you can't treat it and you can't heal them, then the kind thing is to call the birds. Now these, out of my nine birds, four of them had vent prolapse. One worse than the others. Um, today, I haven't checked them today, so we're going to check them together, and if one's still showing up, I'm going to show it to you, and I'm going to show you how I've been treating it and other options that you can use to try to help your birds. Um, now, these five up here, they were good. They were good to go. So, I put a male in here. I can't wait to show you guys this. We have a new stud muffin on the farm, and my dear friend Barbara... Um, gave us this little tuxedo quail. We had a tuxedo before and anyway, we haven't had any more hatch since the, and it was uh, a male too. But anyway, we have a, uh, our new stud muffin is a tuxedo. He's a nice, big, beautiful tuxedo. So we have him up here 
with our, I have five girls with him. And initially, we first put him in there. He was pretty frisky, but he calmed down quickly and settled in, and he's just been the perfect gentleman. So, let me, I want to grab him real quick and show you him. This is my trusty ladder that I have to have at all times to get into the waters and to get on the top shelf when I'm really getting in there after these quail. And, of course, he is in the far back corner because what fun would it be otherwise? Come here, little dude. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. Good job. And you're so feisty. Please don't poop on me or throw up. <laughs> All right. All right. Calm down. Now, the boys are always so feisty. They really are. Yes, you're just feisty. You want to show them how pretty you are? Oh, calm down, calm down. They, oh, yeah, they turn upside down a little bit. They kind of throw up. Do you see? Let me come in a little bit closer. I have to put him right up to my face where it wants to focus on my face. There he is. Calm down, little dude. Come on down. Let's hold your little wings down. There you go. You don't want them to flap around too much. You end up hurting their wings. But he's up there with the five girls, and I will leave the five girls up there. Now, my plans with these four right here, if I can get them all healed up, I am going to put the only other females I have, they're old girls. They are, I mean, really old. And um, so I'm going to put a couple of them in with them and one male, and uh, just to give them some extra females in there with them. My old girls are still laying eggs, so we're, I'm going to put them in there. And we'll just keep it going. I've got an incubator full of more hatching eggs, guys. So we are, we're going to town. We are building, growing, and getting our flock back up. Now, let's take a look at these girls and see how they're doing. Now, this one, she has got some little feathers missing on the back of her head. And, guys, what causes vent prolapse? Overbreeding. And uh, with 14 males and nine females, you can certainly see how that would happen. So let's take a little look-see on her. You turn them upside down and they want to throw up. <laughs> I guess I'd want to throw up too. All right, let me see if I can get you turned around here. All right, now she is looking very good. See? There's no red, nothing swollen, nothing's protruding. She looks very good. Can you see that okay there? Okay. I have two in here that look very similar, so I have to be sure to grab them first. <laughs> so I know who I've looked at and who I haven't. Isn't she a pretty one? Now see, she doesn't have any missing she doesn't have any missing feathers. Come now, come, come now. Come, my little girl. Come, my little girl. You are so feisty. What in the world? Let's see if I can get her posing for you here. There we go. <laughs> You're a pretty girl. Yes, you are. You're a very pretty girl. There they are. She is. Okay. Now, let me get a hold of her. Now that she has thrown up everywhere. All right. Now see, she too. There's no protrusion. There's nothing. Oh, calm down, baby. I hate it when they throw up. There's no swelling or anything like that. So she looks really good too. All right. Now let's get this dark one. This one is a Rosetta, is the coloring. The other two, those were Egyptians. Ah, come on now. There you go. It's okay, precious. All right, let's take a look at her. Okay, you see her? There you go, guys. You see that right there? That is... Yep, 
That's not good. And I can't find, I'm going to have to go look for my medicine. Because what I use, I spray them with witch hazel. Because witch hazel tightens. And uh, what you can do, which I've been spraying them with witch hazel, and she's still protruding like that. She may have just laid an egg, which made it come back out. You can use some KY or some kind of petroleum jelly and gently, very, very gently, kind of push it back in. All right, now I saved this other girl for last because that one, the one I just showed you, she looked really good. She's been looking uh, really good. See, I'm thinking the girls are kind of fighting in there. That they're not getting along too well because she's got a place on her head. Calm down, calm down. You're acting like a little boy. Usually the boys are a little friskier. Now see, she is looking much better. And she's the one that I was really worried about. Now she's still got it just a little bit. See that tiny, they have their little messed up butts. See that tiny little place right there? Can you see that? She still got it a little bit there, so we need to get some spray on her. All right, so let me go find my spray or make up another bottle. All right, I found my spray, guys. See, I like to use just a little spray bottle. Makes it nice and easy. It's just straight witch hazel. Come here, little one. And I am going to, I've been spraying them once a day. I really need to spray them more than that. So we're gonna start spraying these twice a day and really get more aggressive with trying to treat them. Since there's not really, really bad, y'all, I'm not gonna push it back in. There's lots of things online. And see hers, See, I'm just spraying it right on her vent. And hers, now this is the dark one where it was really sticking out since she finally started relaxing. You can see it actually went back in. So she is getting better. It's just when she strains, it's still coming out and we don't want that. And I'm not putting boys with them until I know for sure that they're gonna be okay. So, no matter what's going on in the garden, I'm going to have to come out here and start checking on their little bottoms. Oh, come on. Oh. Whew. Thank goodness she didn't go far. The, the catch isn't usually that's that easy. <laughs> She's a big one. She is a husky little girl, this one is. So I have, and I don't have tiny little petite hands. I always wished I did, but I don't. See, she's not sticking out right now either. I'm gonna show you. See, this witch hazel, just spritz it right on the vent there. And see, she's not sticking out either right now. So she still, that doesn't mean she's a-okay. That means she still has a problem. I've been spraying them once a day, but I don't think I need to do it three times a day. I definitely need to do it twice a day. So anyway, guys, this is the first time I've ever had to deal with this because um, I've always been very conscientious of how many males to females that I have, and we've never had that problem. But um, so this is new to me. These are the things that I have learned, and that witch hazel really is helping a lot. Now, I have heard, too, that you can keep them in a dark location, and uh, so that way, because the light is what, you know, it helps the... There are birds, um, they want to lay eggs, you know, like in the dark, long winters, um, the birds will kind of ease off and won't lay much. Um, I don't have a place to put them in the dark, so we're going to see if we can just keep treating them and see how it goes, but no males until they're all good to go. All right, now, you may have noticed the little chick waters in there. Now, I have put those in there because... I'm having a little leak problem with my waterer, which is an automatic waterer, which you'll also find on our playlist on how to build it. And let me tell you, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. You do not have to worry about water all the time. These big old buckets, 
You can even when it's super hot out, hot out, we like to freeze like half gallon jugs or uh, uh, Pepsi bottles, you know, two liter bottles, things like that. You can freeze those with water and then you can stick them inside these five gallon buckets, y'all, and it cools the water and it gives your animals nice, cool water. We, can, we do the same thing with the chickens because they have the nipples all around. We have a video on how to build that as well. And you just go and put you a big chunk of uh, a frozen jug out there and it cools their water and it gives them something nice and refreshing when it's super hot out. And right now, here in Central Florida, y'all, it is super hot. And it's not even July yet. So anyway, I'm having a leaky problem right here, right here where it connects, so I may need to replace that, and a couple of my cups, which, um, which more than likely is not my cups, it's where a washer is missing. Just another little thing, little tip for you. It's probably a washer missing, which, you know, it happens. So I probably need to, I need to go to Lowe's or somewhere, Home Depot, and find me some little washers and replace them there. And then we should be good to go. But until then, now when you use these little chick waters, you do have to refill them daily. There's just no getting around it. They really go through the water and they'll pull them all over the pen. I don't know how. They're kind of heavy for little tiny birds, but somehow they manage to do it. And you could put a bigger water in there, but they do. They tend to poop in it and everything else. And I just, I'd rather have the small one. So that way I know they have nice clean water. All right guys, now if you've enjoyed this video or you found value in this video, if you could give us a big old thumbs up and comment in the comment section below, we would really appreciate it. We're a new channel and we're striving to grow our channel and to bring all of the homesteading tips and tricks to you on a regular basis. We are building a homestead from scratch and what better way than to learn from somebody else's mistakes and successes. And we certainly have both here. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you more than you know. If you ever have any questions or comments, please be sure and leave them in the comment section below. But until next time, take care and God bless.